Hey everyone, I am so excited to be here tonight and to have one of my good friends. She's sort of one of my girl crushes in the business and we followed each other on TikTok and um, and then we got to meet up when we were t in Nashville for fall conference and it was so fun and um, I just told her like I just love and we did that thing where it's like I love you, no I love you, like I watch your TikToks, no I watch your TikToks um, and I just think hey. that she is so awesome. It's not... Um, I don't want to say not typical because I don't think anybody's experience in this business is like typical. I don't think anybody fits in one box, but I'm just excited for you guys to hear from her and um, dig into some, some more on the like mindset, personal development side of things tonight with her. Um, so I would love for you to introduce yourself, where you're from, why you started, um, and just kind of like where your It Works journey has brought you. Yeah. So hello, everyone. I am Natalie Tanura. I am... I've reached double diamond in the business, but I refer to myself as a diamond because that is what I'm currently maintaining. And I love to be super open about that with everyone because I want people to know that business is ebbs and flows and it happens. So, you know, you never need to be ashamed of what you're doing or where you're at in the business. Just be honest with yourself and others and everything's going to be fine. Um, I started a few years ago when I was in college. I was 19. Um, I was going to school full time. And I, what was I doing? I was working retail at the time. I was full time college. I was on the soccer team and I was working retail. And in between all of that, I still didn't have enough money to pay for gas, for groceries, for just like random college stuff, like wanting to go out to eat, um, getting my nails done, whatever. So in between all of that, like my team knows me as I would donate my plasma. I was a girl who would donate my plasma for like an extra 20, 30 bucks here and there. And it literally made me sick because your plasma, which I'm just, I was just silly enough to not really think about it at the time, but your plan, like that's your white blood cells that keeps you healthy. So I was doing all of that, literally making myself sick because I didn't have enough money to pay for my gas and all of those things. And I remember clear as day, it was April 17th um, and I was home for Easter break because we did Easter break and I remember that this girl messaged me you know I was I was home for break and I was just so broke but I remember that this girl random girl that I never met before messaged me on Instagram three months prior and I was just my me and my friends it, it was like such a negative cycle like you talk about how broke you are and then your friend talks about how broke they are and then you just feed off of each other's negative energy and we were doing that thing and I kind of was just sick of it like at that point I was just sick of it and I hit that point where I was like remembering that this random girl messaged me three months prior and I don't know why I didn't even tell my friend like this is one of my best girlfriends but I didn't even tell her that like I was thinking about it during our conversation, but that night I went home, I looked up the girl in my DMs, way back in my DMs, who messaged me, and she was just saying like, hey, like, I think you'd be really, it was like one of the most basic messages, it was like, hey, I think you'd be great at what I do, we have a $500 bonus, have you ever thought about doing this? I didn't even know what she was talking about, but I messaged her back that night, and I said, uh, yes, I'm interested, like, how can I sign up, whatever. She didn't get back to me the next till the next day. And the next day, you guys, I literally signed up for $99 on the spot that morning after like one back and forth, like quick. Um, she told me this. So what I do is I market and advertise. And I was like, okay, cool. And I joined for $99 on the spot. So I always like to say that because, you know, a lot of people think that no, they can't find people if it's not super, super cheap to get started. But the people who you want in your business are the people who are like, okay, they, they see what they need to do head on. And they're like, okay, I'm going to do it. Even if they take a while to join, it didn't really take me that long to join, but you know, it took me three months to finally get that spark from her message. So, you know, I joined off of that. And so I got started and, you know, I started posting right away. I got, I fell in love with the trainings. I basically trained myself through Jade Hooper's YouTube channel a hundred percent. I really didn't ask. Yeah. I hope just raise your hand because I literally didn't ask my enroller questions. I could have, but I really did it. And I just kind of like led myself to her channel. I probably was opened up to it by our team page. Our team pages are awesome. You can totally be like self-sufficient using the team pages alone. So then I found Jade's YouTube. I started teaching myself all this stuff and just posting random crap all over my page and just kind of like making it work. Um, and you know, I was doing all that and I still 
find I still would like determine myself as a slow starter because while I was I was posting I was you know getting out there I was so obsessed with learning that it almost like held me back it, it did hold me back because I could have done things faster but I just was so in love with like the girls and the community and just the trainings and the YouTube and the stories that I, I got way way too deep into that without like starting to cultivate my own story so that's the only thing I would say, but like, I don't regret a single thing because it's, it's all in my mind. It's all in my heart. You know what I mean? Like I remember trainings from years ago, just because that's what's, that's, what's grown the love for the business for me. So I was doing all that. Um, I think I went Ruby within my first, I think I went Ruby in eight months. And to this day, like, I know I could have done that sooner, but it doesn't, timelines do not matter. I was going to school full time. I was on the soccer team. I thought it was awesome making a few extra hundred bucks a month um, from my phone. So I started doing that. I got so excited that uh, once I went Ruby, that was literally the amount I was making working my retail job. So I quit my retail job, pretty ballsy, but I was so, I was driving myself sick, the whole plasma thing. Like I, I just was like, how can this be like, this is amazing. I'm getting this from my phone. So why not just quit my retail job that I hate? Um, so I did that. And ever since then, I just have been like super, super, you know, committed to figuring out how to make this work, no matter what season I was in. Like, even if it was a tough season, we're talking about self-love today. So there's going to be a lot of like, talk about that. But even if it was a down time in my life, like I was, I was still committed to like, figuring out how to make the business work with my life, because that's all it is. Like we're joining this business and I kind of understood this early on, which I'm thankful for, but we joined this business to make it work into your life and like make it your own, be authentic, make it your own, not to just like conform and make this business your life. You know what I mean? Um, so that's kind of what I did. I've been through so many seasons. I'm not in college anymore. I graduated, I graduated college two years ago. Um, I went diamond in college. I went double diamond last summer, lost rank, um, took a teaching job at a school and now we're going to get my rank back. You know what I mean? Like we're just building each other up as we go. Our team, we, we make teams or we have a team as we go. So you just keep going. Um, but I've literally been through probably what one, two, three, like three or four different life changes throughout the business, but my story evolves. And that's what all of us do, you know, I've met people who didn't have kids when we first met in the business and now I have kids. Um, they weren't married. Now they are married. I was in college. Now I'm working at a school and I'm doing the business and I make an awesome income doing both. Um, and so, you know, like who knows where I'll be in a year, but I just love that I have, it works in my back pocket and I could work it from wherever. Yes, yes, I love all that. So I wrote down a few things. So I, when I joined, I was also in college, I was 21. And I was also in that negative cycle where like you and your friends would like basically sit around and like, talk about how poor you were and how much it sucked and how much work sucked and then like just drink and then just like get up and do it all over again the next day and I was so sick and tired of feeling that way drop a one in the chat if you've ever felt that way like you know that you want something to change but you don't do anything to change it. And I think that's just like the way that a lot of us are unfortunately sort of programmed in society is just like, well, we're supposed to just work, you know, go to college, get a degree, go to a nine to five job for 40 years. I'm like, that's your life. And I think that um, it's hard, to, it's hard to break out of that pattern. But um, I love what you talked about also with saying like, people not having money doesn't really matter. Like the people who are supposed to, be on this journey with us they will find it Natalie d did not have it she was just talking about how she was like selling plasma to make extra money like I was literally putting gas and groceries on credit cards on a daily or on a, a weekly basis racking up credit card debt at 21 years old like I did not have it when I the first time I, she told me about this business I was like I have seven dollars <laughs> like you expect me to do this with seven dollars in my pocket so but we made it work for us. And you have to have this mindset when you're talking to people um, about the business and when you're sharing about the business um, with people. So then I love what you said about the team pages because it wasn't me who said it this time, but you guys listen to Natalie, you could run your entire business with only the team page, only the team page. 
you could do it, but you also have boards and you also have Zooms and you also have YouTube and you also have chats and you also have leaders and you all like, if we can do this, literally figuring it out by watching videos, there is no reason why you can't do it with all of the resources we have now at your fingertips. Um, I also love that you said you were obsessed with learning. I would, so I went Ruby in, in seven months and then I went Emerald at in my eighth month, but I love what you said about like, you were sort of so obsessed with the learning that like, you didn't necessarily spend that time like taking the action. But in those eight months, you guys, I fell so deeply in love with this business and this community. And I'm not talking about like the keto coffee and the new white packaging. I'm talking about, I fell in love with the black, green and bling skinny wrap yeah. business that was like giving me wrap cash. like. And from that, you know, so many people, they're like, oh my, cause it's been, it's been over six years for me. And, and you go through so many life changes and it's like, how can you still like, how can you still be doing that basically? And it's like, I just fell in love with it. I just, I fell in love with the community. I fell in love with wanting to be empowered. I fell in love with wanting to better myself. I fell in love with being surrounded by other people who wanted to better themselves. And so if you haven't yet, um, you know, maybe don't go full on, like have to watch every YouTube video ever made, but like maybe you start going to YouTube and watching a video from a different leader from the top of our company every day. If you need a list of leaders, um, I know I'm sure Natalie has one. I, I can definitely just make one up off the top of my head, but there are so many incredible people with incredible stories that are all different from all different walks of life, all different places um, that have made this business work for them. And that's, um, so I loved, I loved that you said that the community, the stories, like that's what makes you fall in love with this and want to keep going. Um, and then I wrote this down and then I underlined it. Timelines don't matter. How many of you are allowing a timeline that maybe you thought you could do, or you should do, or you would do put you into like a negative space instead of just going through the seasons of your life. Natalie just talked about how she's had three or four life changes since she started. I have certainly had three or four life changes since I started my business six years ago. Um, and I think all the time about how, you know, obviously if you would have asked me a year into my business, do you think in five years you'll be ambassador? I would have been like, oh, heck yeah. I'm not ambassador. I am not maintaining people. Like I'm not like, I'm not where I thought that I would be, but I'm, but I'm still grateful to be here because I started this business for $200 a month. That was it. That was all I wanted. And I make five, six, seven, eight times like that in a month now, sometimes, you know, like in every season, it's been different. So I just love that. So um, let's talk, let's go to that. The next question that I have for you. So we are, we are talking, we are talking self-love. So um, and I know this is something that you and I really like, we, we both make like talks about it. Like it's something that's very important to us going on this personal growth and self-love journey. So can you just talk a little bit about that? Because I think so many people want to present themselves in this confident, um, authentic way. And I think the only way you do that is if you love yourself really. Mm -hmm. So, um, give us some, give us some bits on that and how like your self-love journey has impacted your business also. Yeah. yeah. And, and again, like that's kind of like the same thing as like business. You're going to have so many ebbs and flows. Like, just like I said, in the beginning, you're going to have so many different ebbs and flows of your self-love journey throughout it. I mean, that's just life in general. But when I started this business, I feel like I kind of started off somewhat like I had like fake self-love. I didn't really know what it was, which is the reason why I really think that I latched onto this business so much when I joined, because no one has ever taught me about like self-love and empowerment and like all of those things. Like it literally blew my mind. And it kind of sounds, it kind of sounds like self-explanatory stuff these days, because we do have TikTok and we see that stuff kind of all over the place now, but this business was, has forever been the first thing that has ever, not even this business, this community, our community, our team. It's been the first thing that's ever introduced me to anything like that. And for that, I will forever be grateful, literally forever be grateful. Um, so throughout my business, I feel like the self-love thing, it, it does require a lot of background work. Like you can't just wake up one day and decide like, Hey, I mean, you can decide, you can decide like, Hey, I'm going to love myself today. I'm going to be confident today, but 
you really have to push yourself. And it took me so long to do these things, but you have to push yourself to even put in small bits of action. So you could literally prove it to your brain first. And it took me a long time to do that. Like it took me forever to start talking in my stories or go live or whatever, but like those types of things, because I did love the business and I did love the whole idea. Those types of things were so necessary for me to continue to grow in the way I wanted to grow. So like I heard people say like, Hey, why don't you start journaling? And I'm like, I've never tried to journal before, but okay, I'll do it. And as soon as I started journaling, I started, you know, finding like, Hey, there's girls who do journaling zooms in our company. Again, found that through a team page, just typed in a random code and joined a random journaling zoom and then found it was an awesome, amazing group of women. So then I started getting really into journaling. And then, you know, I would hear on zoom calls all the time that like, how do you start your morning? Um, like, do you, do you speak affirmations to yourself? Do you listen to a podcast? Do you do this, this and that? And I'm like, I really don't like, I wake up in the morning and like, I do some deep breathing. I scroll my social media. And then like, you usually come across something negative and that's how I would start my day. But I didn't realize that that's how I was starting my day. You know, we just, it's just social media, social media, but that's getting in your brain. And like, I'm not a sciencey person, but I know that there's a science behind like what you take in right as you wake up that like is actually embedding in the science of your brain and it does impact you. Um, so I started learning like, okay, I need to change up my mornings. Um, and I'm going to tell you, like, I am the biggest music person ever. I adore music. I love music. I love to teach myself how to play guitar through YouTube, um, and the keyboard through YouTube, but you know, and I would always start my morning off with music. Some, usually some kind of like rock or like, you know, something to get me in the mood and the jam or whatever. Um, it kind of changes all the time, but I started listening to podcasts and I thought it would be so boring. I thought it would be like, it's a waste of my time. Um, I like to start my mornings off in a vibe, you know, but as soon as I started doing the podcast and like, even just starting off with, I would start off with YouTube videos. I'm obsessed with Will Smith. This will kind of go into branding that we're going to talk about, but like everyone knows I love Will Smith. So I'm like, okay, Will Smith motivation. And like, that's kind of how I started. I just started searching random people, Oprah Winfrey motivation um, on YouTube. And like, they would just say these, these things that I would like hear and it would give me chills throughout my whole body. And it would just like, that's what made me become so obsessed with starting my day out in a better way because I'm like, wow, I feel like I could take on the world because like Will and Oprah and whoever are telling me these things. And so once I kind of went through, I, I literally think I went through every single motivational video on YouTube, even though I know I didn't. But once I got to that point, I'm like, I could graduate to a podcast now. And I started listening to podcasts. And if you're just starting off your self-love journey, you know, your self-care, whatever, um, that's none of that was business stuff. That was all personal self-love to the soul heart kind of stuff. And, you know, if you're just starting off, I do recommend doing the whole YouTube thing, search your favorite person, find motivation, but then like you will, that will carry you into like finding podcasts that you just gravitate towards. You're just going to attract it. I attract the most amazing life-changing podcasts to me. Um, and you'll just, you'll just find your own way with that. It's great to get recommendations, but like when you just gravitate towards like what was meant for you, you listen to these things and it just is like, you know, it's for you. So now I literally like, I listen to podcasts more than I listen to music just because like, I want to, like, I literally always just want something good in my ear. And of course, you know, the reason I'm not even talking about business is because that translates into business, but first it's, it's all me. And like, by doing all that, it helped me get on my stories more. It helped me talk to my team in a different light and understand them in a different light. Um, you know, like we're human beings. Sometimes it was like, I just wanted everyone to succeed. And I wanted people to feel how it felt going diamond and all those things that like, I forget that other people aren't on the same path as this, you know, my self love self improvement path that I was on. So it's like, everyone's at their own pace. Sometimes like, like the team did for me, like sometimes all you need to do is lead someone in a way of like, Hey, go on YouTube and search your favorite person motivation. And like, it's just like that little thing you could change someone's life because like, I don't know who I would be without all of that today. It's changed me completely as a person. 
Well, I, I love that you said this because I think that that's like when when you're talking about self love, and obviously we're doing this as like a like on our it works Zoom. But the reason that being on a self growth and personal development journey um, to love myself more and and to live a better life and to have you know maybe not co more control over my emotions, but more knowledge about my emotions and be able to have better behaviors and better habits because I'm learning new things every single day. And um, this can come from literally a YouTube video, a podcast, um, really anything. And I, and I completely agree with you that podcasts just come to you. I just recently started listening to a podcast called uh, Purposeful Social Selling. It literally just, I opened up my podcast app and it just like, was on the front of my podcast app. I hadn't opened it in like a few days and I was like, huh, okay. I'm like obsessed with it. It's like so good. That's all I've been listening to this week. But sometimes things like this just happen. But you know when that doesn't happen? If you don't open up your podcast app. Like what if you just opened up podcast and searched positivity? Mm -hmm. Like who knows what you might find that might be so moving for you. And I love that you talked about it being a journey because I know that, this, you know, some of the things that were, you know, some of the things that, you know, my girl Kylie like loves her devotionals, loves her Bible study. That's not my jam, but that's what lights her on fire. And she should keep doing that. Like for me, it's way more like podcast, motivational speakers or taking courses, things like that. Um, so, and that's, it just little tiny things, starting your day with something positive instead of scrolling social media, starting or ending your day by making sure your phone is put away 30, you know, 30 minutes to an hour before you want to go to sleep and maybe you journal in bed and you write down five things you're grateful for that happened that day. It doesn't take that much time and it is going to start to change your brain chemistry from needing the validation of social media in order to go out and do the things that you need to do today. And that's really what self-love in this era means to me because we work our businesses on social media. Like how do we love ourselves more than we care if other people love us or not? Because that's what it becomes when you're in this business, right? You're like, I just want people, I'm just posting every day. I just want people to like my posts and just like love me and want to join me. You have to love yourself first or, the, or those people are not ever going to come to you. So um, because you're not going to be brave enough or confident enough or love yourself enough to show up in a way where they even see you. They can't see the TikTok you don't make, honey. They can't see the, the story you don't talk in. So I just, that's why I'm so passionate about self-love and I am um, I, I wrote a freaking, I wrote a course. I wrote a six week self love to success coaching course, and it's going to be coming in the new year. And I, and I'm so, so passionate about, about knowing yourself and, and all of the things that come with self love. And I just, I love everything you said. So that was it. And I love, like, so I wrote down, like, learn, you just learn better habits, just learn some better habits, take it slow, baby steps, five minutes, in the morning, a podcast on your way to work instead of music. Affirmations at night before you go to sleep. Get out your post-it notes, write some affirmations, stick them up on your mirror so you can look at them while you're brushing your teeth. Even just those little things are going to start making a huge difference. A hundred percent. And like, it literally is small things. Don't stress yourself out. This isn't supposed to be a job. This is something that like, I literally can't wait to do. But the one thing I was going to say is like, when she was talking about like loving yourself, because like, you, people can't even see your light if you're not loving yourself enough to like show it to other people. Listen, we don't even like everyone. So we can't even worry about everyone liking us. You know what I mean? So like, amen to that. I spend a lot of time on TikTok and I'm like, I don't like you. I don't like you. And that's yeah. okay. It, life would be boring if everyone liked everyone. Like that's how you find your people. So that's all I wanted to say. Like, we don't like everyone. Let's be real. And that's okay. It doesn't mean that we hate mm -mm. them. No, and them. it doesn't mean that they're not somebody's somebody. Yes. Like exactly. that doesn't mean that they don't have a best friend, uh, a mom who, you know, loves them, like that they don't have a big group of friends. It just means that like, they're not your, there's that, there's that quote, like you can be the ripest, juiciest peach in the whole world. And there's still going to be somebody who doesn't like peaches, right? It's not about you not being am amazing, but I, I think. And I shouldn't say, but, and I think there's just really something to be said for when you like yourself. And, and I know it's easier said than done in this society, but you're going to make it a lot easier for yourself to like yourself when you are taking the steps to 
psychologically make yourself feel better. So not picking up your phone first thing in the morning, saying nice things to yourself, taking time to think about what you're grateful for that day, even on the hardest day. Those are little small things you do that literally rewire your brain. They literally rewire your brain. That's why, why do you think every successful person you've ever talked to has been like, I wake up early, I journal, I work out, I right? Like I, like I hang out with other successful people. I read books. I listen to podcasts. Like it's not a coincidence. That's, that's one of the things that helps people. It helps you keep going you guys. And that's the truth is that you're going to have up seasons and you're going to have down seasons. You're going to have seasons where it's super easy to work your business. You have seasons where it's super hard to wake up and work your business every single day. It's been the last year for me. Like, I don't think there's been more than three days in this last year that I've been like, yeah, this is awesome. On that fourth day, I'm always like, oh my God, this is the last thing I want to do today. But I keep going because I love myself and I love my family and I, and I love this community and I love my business. And I, and so I'm not being driven by this like fear or like need for validation. I'm literally being driven by like, I want to live my best life. I want to have, I want to find joy and I want to live my best life and I want to be a better person. So Anyways, I, I love all of that. So then that's how it impacts your business because we know that our business is what we put into it. And so if you're putting in all of this like fear and hesitation versus like you woke up and you told yourself you were amazing and beautiful and you like drank a cup of coffee on your porch in the sunshine and took deep breaths. Like you are going to be so much happier <laughs> for the rest of the day, um, or at least started off on the right foot. So um, we just talked a little bit about this, but give me, let's, let's do it the opposite of the way I sent it to you. So give me some tips for um, being authentic online, some things you can do to, to show sort of that authentic self online. And then let's switch to like, how did you decide like what kind of brand and what kind of things you wanted to share? Yes. So... <laughs> I find myself like as a very, you know, this is a thing. This is my self-love thing. I always thought that I was really awkward. So it was so hard for me to start, or I thought it was so hard for me to start going, but I really was just holding myself back from like progressing. Um, the first live I did, I had one of my teammates uh, hop on and wa have her watch. So like she could tell me how I did and like, yeah, I was sweating. I don't even think they could notice. And I was shaking a little bit, but like, she thought I did awesome. And that prompted her to then go on her live or maybe even just talk on her stories. And then she did it. And so like that even gave me confidence. And so I kind of just started to, you know, put myself out there, you know, get a little uncomfortable with being get, wait, get, you know what I'm saying, with being uncomfortable, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. So I could just kind of do that. And it gave me more confidence to do those things. Um, I started, I started sharing, you know, just little things like random things throughout my day. I literally just looked at what my leaders did and I tried to emulate it. You know, I would look at what Jade did. I would watch Carrie Young. I would watch, uh, you know, everyone. I watched Hope. Like I watched so many people and like, I just saw what they did. And like, hey, maybe I didn't have a baby or I didn't relate to that thing in their life, but like I could twist it and make it my own thing. So I would kind of just do that. And I would go on my story. I would even sometimes to make it easier, like you don't have to talk every day. So I would at least show my face, post a music in the background, making my coffee. You've all seen so many people do that. Um, and then like, hey, we all have TikTok now. We're like, none of us, I'm pretty sure can say that we're like, so perfect on every single platform and whatever but like I just kind of try and I do it even though I'm still uncomfortable to do certain things like the more I do things the better I feel the better I get um you know when I'm consistently killing the game on TikTok I start to get so many people commenting and like it it boosts my confidence but it's when we get in seasons of doubt that all of that starts to slow down and like like I said, like, I'm not perfect. I haven't been killing the game at TikTok either. And I feel it. I'm like, it feels good when people are actually interacting with you. Like when I met Hope in Nashville and she said that she loved my TikToks, I didn't even know she knew who I was, but that's like, you know what I mean? And she told me she loved my TikToks and she told her team like, Hey, like you should like look at Natalie's TikToks. And I was baffled. And it's like, it's those things that, Hey, because I did that, other people actually did see me. I wouldn't have known that. And I got out of my comfort zone and I flew myself to Nashville to be at this 
small event, you know, in a, in a conference room with Jade Hooper and Hope and Cheyenne and all these people. It's like, well, if I wouldn't have done that, then I wouldn't have realized that people did watch my TikToks and thank God that I did get out of my comfort zone and prop my phone against a tree and walk in front of the camera and then decide what words I wanted to put on it later. You know, like it's just those small things that add up. And then later you're like, oh, dang, that did make a difference. Yeah. Um, and then what was your second question? Um, and so then, so then once you, so you, you're like, okay, I'm going to build better habits. I'm going to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. I know I want to get out there more. How did you choose what things besides it works you were going to include into your brand of things that you were going to be talking about every day because and I just had this conversation with somebody who's been in the business for eight years and she was and she's gone in and out of it a little bit and um, mm -hmm. she was saying that you know I just it doesn't feel good when all I'm posting about is it works all the time right drop a two if you're like if I'm just posting about it works all the time like I start to literally feel like the sham wow guy like I can't like it's so hard and I know that there are seasons of like month end and like promotions and stuff where like we all get a little like would you try two gummies and lose 90 pounds in 90 days like we all get like that a little bit during certain seasons where we're trying to hit goals but I think on a daily basis um a lot of people would love would love to to share a lot of different things authentically and maybe they're just not sure how to do that so I know you mentioned you love Will Smith so I, I want to hear about that but how did you decide what things you were going to share besides it works in order to give you that authenticity when people are, are looking at your profiles? Mm -hmm. I think a huge, well, I know a huge part of that was literally from diving into the whole like self-development journey and like actually like journaling and kind of like figuring out what like I loved and what made me feel good. And what made me feel good was making myself feel good by doing those things. So, you know, I kind of just started posting about that. I would share the podcast I was listening to and then maybe I would get on my story and then I would talk about like, kind of like what I learned. And, you know, for a little bit, it was like, I, I would talk about the business hustle, like, like, dang, like, look at this. We could grind, we could do all that. And that's cool. Like, yeah, some people liked it, but then I changed a bit, you know, I kept growing and I changed. And then I got really like into, just the self-love, like, hey, what makes you feel good? You know, I've been through just like everyone, um, a, a lot of life in this business over four years. I've been in for four years. Um, I've lost people. I've had family members sick. I have family members sick now, very close family members. So I've been through a lot of different journeys of everything. And so like lately, you know, throughout the different like business, like grind, hustle, whatever stuff I would share about in the podcast I was listening to. And then you know, travel destinations and stuff that I love, which do make me happy. I fell into like, what makes me feel good and wanting to share like, hey, maybe like you guys might want to journal about these two things today. Let me share about what I journaled about today. And like, I would just start sharing more of that. And then just like, I save 50 million quotes from Pinterest on my camera roll day. I literally have 25,000 photos in my camera roll. And so I'm like, why am I not sharing this stuff? Like, it's not dramatic. Like, stop telling yourself it's dramatic and start sharing about the things that you actually love. And so I started mixing that in and it felt so much better. It felt so much better. And I put myself in the shoes of like everyone else. I wouldn't want to just watch videos of products all day long. Um, and so like, I, I just kind of like started learning and doing my own thing and just sharing about things that actually genuinely made me feel good. And I had to tell myself like, it's okay to get on your story and actually talk about those things, not just business, because I don't know, it just, I had to, I had to do that. Not everyone, like none of my friends get on their story and talk like that aren't in the business, you know, like hometown people. No, I actually have a hilarious story, you guys, because I recently started working outside the home again as well for mental health purposes. My therapist highly recommended. I don't spend all my time on social media. What do you know? Um, and, and recently one of the, um, guys who, um, really friendly gay guy that I work with, super funny. Um, he friended me on Facebook and I hadn't, I hadn't friended anybody that I worked with yet just because like I do this, you know, and I use my Facebook so much. Like I use my Facebook more than I use either of any of my other platforms, but he friended me and I wasn't going to deny his friend request. And so then the next time I see him at work, he goes, you're just so cute talking to in your story when you make your coffee every morning I've never seen anyone do that before <laughs> I, was like, I mean 
<laughs> unless you follow it works people like you're not wrong you know what I'm saying and so I think sometimes we just get really caught up in like you said like feeling like we have to do those things every day and you should be consistent in talking about the things that you love in your story we just hope that one of the things you love is these products and this business definitely right so yeah. it's like if you love the products in your business then turning around and saying okay well you should Talk, you know, you should talk about the things you love. You should talk about the things that make you feel good. That should include getting on team zoom tonight. That should include helping somebody order products from you. And you're so excited to see their health journey. That should include you taking your products because you know how amazing our products are and how they make you feel so good and so much better. Um, and so that's how you incorporate, like, it's more of how you, this is what you said at the very beginning of the zoom. This business is more about how you incorporate it into your life than it is about taking this it works blanket and draping it over your entire life right um and then I just love what you talked about feeling good because I've been trying to do this like so much um and, and it's almost hard for me I, it's it's almost like just like a bad habit that I need to like break because I'm so used to talking it works kind of all the time and um but I'm like me and my husband are giant nerds you guys I'm literally sitting here surrounded by Dungeons and Dragons books like literally at my kitchen table, just out of camera shot. Giant nerds. We love fantasy. We love um, video games. We love Pokemon, Star Wars, Harry Potter, like you name it. And it's like, nobody knows this about me because I just share all of the other things. And it's like, how many fandoms did I just include? Like how many more people could I like make content for and like connect with if I just shared some of these things that I like just love so much but like I'm not sharing them because I don't think that other people want to see them even though they're things that I genuinely love and like make me happy and and so I would encourage you guys whatever that when when she said that when she said I wanted to start sharing whatever made me feel good and what made me happy what came to mind for you in in that moment you don't you don't have to type it in the chat but like you know what came to mind you and then oh well I feel really good when I you know xyz this is what I do for myself this is what I do for fun um and then figure out ways to put that in your stories and make TikToks about it. Um, and if you need help doing that, you know, we, we can help you. We can, I'm always brainstorming with people. I got on a coaching call with my girl, Kylie, um, about a month ago. And I was like, dude, I just hung out with you in Nashville. You're funny. Do you know you're funny? Like really funny, like dry sense of humor, comedic timing, sarcasm, the whole bit. She was like, really? And I was like, yeah, you should just like make funny TikToks. Like people would freaking love it. And she was like, I mean, okay. And then literally started making funny TikToks. I started giving her like all of this confidence. Homegirl went out and rolled four customers in two weeks. Like just from like, just opening up the side of herself that like, I mean, we've been friends for a while. So I, it's not like I didn't think like, oh, she's not funny. But when I hung out with her in person, I was like, no, do, like, I don't stop laughing when we're together. And like, I wish more people would like feel that from you because it's so genuine. And um, I, I just love the idea of adding layers to ourselves online because that is what makes us stand out. That is what makes us genuine. That is um, what allows people to know, like, and trust you is when they don't just know your profile picture and what it says in your bio, but they know who you are and what you do and what you love and what makes you laugh and where you came from and all of these things. That's what makes you real on. So we're all just on social media all the time. What makes you real to people? Um, because people are not going to join someone who they don't think is a real life person, right? We get that all, you know, this the other day I had someone I'm making most of us. She was like, is this real? I was like, honey, you can scroll my Facebook for like seven years, <laughs> like go for it. Um, and so, um, and then I, and then I just wrote copying, you have to just show up, copy the right cats and, and consistency. She didn't just, Natalie didn't just start doing this and then overnight she felt better and it was all great and had tons of people interacting. It was as she continued to do it, people were like, go to her stories to see what podcast she's listening to. Like now though, not when she started. So you have to be willing to go at it for um, a little while. And then you said this and then like, you can say it two ways. So it's like, the more you do, the better you get, as in like, the more you do, the better you get at it. But the more you do also, the more you get, like the more interaction, the more relationship, the more friendship, the more connection, the more customers, the more distributors. So just remember that the more you do, the better you get. And I think that's a great quote because then you can read it twice and it means and it means two different things in this business, which is amazing. So 
Um, any any other thoughts on self love, branding, authenticity? I just think it's like such an important journey. Like it has impacted the way I interact with my family, you know, my boyfriend, just every everything in life. Like I just see things so differently. So it's not just a thing that like oh, I have to like just get into this for my business, like and to be better for my business. It's just for life. But then it helps you in business and it helps you just find all this more like just more freedom in life and just all these things and I don't know like it just helps you develop into like you realize like I am really cool like what like what makes me cool what makes me fun and like then you get to find people who are like that too and like it might it might not be every single day but like you're gonna get once you start showing more of your light and like who you are, you're going to start getting a comment, maybe even, maybe just even once a month, but someone's going to say like, like, thank you so much for like your posting or like what you just posted all that I've been watching you. And like, it literally makes my day. I get so excited to see what you're going to post. Um, like it just like opened my eyes, like stuff like that. And you're like, we all know people are watching, but it's getting those types of comments, just be, especially when it's not business stuff, just stuff like the self-love stuff, what you love, what makes you feel good. Like it shows you people are watching. And if you could just keep going, you're not only going to like get what you put into it, like you're going to get so much out of it and like grow personally too. Like you're going to just like see like I can actually make a difference as I'm making a difference in my own life. And it that will fuel you because it's like, you're not just doing it alone. Like you're that actual person that can be like a, like, I don't know, a spokesperson for others who aren't willing to do what we do. Like so many people aren't even willing to press a submit button to like do something like this, let alone continue to grow and like do different things. Like you are that spokesperson for people who are young moms or people who are, you know, into into worship and service like a ton of my girls on my team and like Kylie and like just so different like I don't I don't even know I'm into all these things like I like Will Smith people know I love Will Smith I <laughs> people know I like my celery juice I listen to Will Smith while drinking my celery juice I combine that right. um, <laughs> I posted a Will Smith TikTok today because he's so like into the soul stuff and I was like that really gets me and it's just like you just like find yourself just like sharing your life and then like like yeah. the business just works into it no totally and then you and then like you just said like you just are going to attract so much more of a genuine relationship with people which is then how you're gonna you know how you're gonna get people who you talk to and maybe they're not interested at the moment but then life changes and then and then they are interested that's what it does is on here today because she signed up yesterday because i messaged her about some products two years ago on instagram and then yesterday she te- she messaged me and she was like all right girl i've been thinking about this for way too long like i gotta just jump in and do this and so but you get that from sharing your authentic self. Des had to trust that I was a real person enough to like just message me and like just sign up on a website, you know? And that and that comes from consistency, that comes from authenticity, and that comes from me showing up on the days even when I don't want to. I'm like, the last thing I wanna do is talk in my story this morning. I'm not gonna talk in my story. I'm gonna put my hair up in a bun and put music over it and, and make it instead, but I'm still showing up. And so that's what I wrote down, you have to just show up copy the right cat, be consistent. The more you do, the better you get. And, and you're going to find a way to make this business work for you. Um, and then, and then it won't feel, then it won't feel so difficult. It won't feel so difficult because you're doing it for you in a way that feels so good to you. Um, and then when you start, and then when you start getting results from that, it's like, you just become obsessed with like, wow, I'm really getting, like, I'm really getting messages. I'm really getting comments. I'm really getting customers. I'm really finding people who want to join my team. And, but you have to do it. And, and so I love that you talked about too, like, obviously learn the things, take care of yourself, be kind to yourself, go on your personal development journey, but don't, but don't do that in place of showing up and doing the work because mm-hmm. the way you build confidence is by do it. You only get better at Facebook lives by going live on Facebook. You only get better at making TikToks by making and posting TikToks. Um, and everybody wants the microwave meal. Everybody wants to say, okay, what do I do for 30 seconds? And then what'll pop out when it's done? Like the Kylie and I were just talking about like the vend, like the vending machine. Like you're mm-hmm. like, I put in a dollar, I should be getting a soda. Like, like 
why isn't my soda coming out yet? You know, that's like, that's just the life that we, that we're kind of taught, but that's just not how this business works. So um, I, I would love to answer this question. I think this is one of your girls, right, Natalie? Um, so what do you say to people who insist this is a scam? I had someone comment I posted about starting my business who said it was a scam. I was really excited and they posted that comment. It's not a scam. So you have to start doing this is what we're talking about tonight. You have to start doing this thing where it's like, you know that it's not, so don't let it bother you when people say that it is because they just don't know any better, mm -hmm. right? It, it, it's, ig it's ignorance and maybe even just a lack of, to like learn new things. Also, um, there are scams online, right? Like we all see them. People are like, drop your cash tag. I'm like, I hate you. I block you. Goodbye. Um, so you, so the way that you respond to that is, hi, no, it's not. If you'd like more info, I'd love to give it to you. And, and you don't do this like, no, it's not. We have real products and we get paid five different ways. And we will, like they did, like they're already not in a place to hear any of that. So you just say, hi, thanks for your concern. No, it's not. If you would like more info, I'd love to message you some. And then they'll either say, no, I don't want any info. It's a scam. And you'll say, okay, well, obviously, if you're not open to learning new information, you're not the kind of person I want to share this business with. Um, and, and you really let it go. Now, I do want to speak to this specifically. I used to get so heated red freaking hot you guys I could feel the steam coming out of my ears up when people would be like that's fake that's a scam you can't make money with this those products don't work like it used to drive me freaking like batty <laughs> and every time that it happened I got a little bit better with like managing that because there was a few times that like I totally got into it in the Facebook comments of somebody who was like calling this pyramid scheme right and you and you know what it helped nothing I felt like crap the other person felt like crap we were both blocked at the end of the day anyways right so it's like take my advice and like don't go through your like hothead stage and just a lot like you can it can hurt it can hurt your feelings especially if it's someone who you know in real life you're like wow you don't trust my judgment enough to know that I would not join something if it was a scam like but you also have to recognize that number one if they know you in real life they're really probably just concerned right it's hurtful because it hurts your feelings but they're really just concerned for you and that does come from a place of love even if it's like misplaced right even if it doesn't come across that way to you and then second of all you have to realize that they just don't know they just don't know what you know. My husband was so mad that I spent $99 on this. So mad. But he was like, all right, whatever. My husband is now a stay-at-home dad finishing the college degree of his dreams with no student debt. He, is he still mad at me? No. No. So anybody who's truly for you, with you, loves you, and supports you, they'll get over it. And if they can't get over it and they can't leave you alone about it, they don't really care about you. And I know that sounds like so brutal when I say it that way, but I've been doing this business for over six years. And like the people who couldn't get over the fact I was doing this business, like they didn't care about me. Like they didn't come to my baby shower. They didn't write me congrats when I got married. Like they weren't the friendships for me. And I have made so many new incredible relationships with amazing women who see what I see and who do what I do. People like Natalie, people like Kylie and Jillian and Tiani and, um, my girls, Marissa, and anyone else who was in Nashville who I got to hug and squeeze. And so just hold on to that, babe. Literally the first 90 days is the hardest like of your life. You're building new habits. You're in new environments. People who are in old, hab old habits and old environments are going to get totally freaked out at the fact that you're doing something. It's going to make your life better because they're not willing to do anything to make their life better. They're still stuck in that negative cycle. They're going to go, oh my gosh, she's going to leave us. She's going to get rich and fancy and she's going to leave us, right? Get rich and fancy. If they're still your friends, they'll still freaking love you, right? So um, anyways, I yeah, and a confu confused mind will always say no, right? So maybe like the only thing that, th that they know is that like they watched the Lula Rich documentary on whatever that's on, Hulu, and they're like, those things are all scams. And it's like, it's not even the business that I'm in. You know, like they just don't know what they don't know. Um, so yeah, just the world is changing so fast. MLM is not new. Network marketing is not new, but what we do is new. 
right? How many of you had a Facebook 15 years ago? Nobody, because I'm pretty sure it wasn't even out yet. So you have to understand that as the world changes, like nobody thought someone could like fly an airplane, right? Nobody thought like we could create electricity. We did that. We did that. And there are thousands of women making massive amounts of income, M hundreds of thousands of women making massive amounts of income with this business and with businesses like these. So why not you? So why not you? Why not us? Literally no reason except for getting out of our own way and loving ourselves enough to show up as our authentic selves. That's it. That's all. Um, Natalie, thank you so much for being on with me tonight. I know you got to pick up your sister. I am so appreciative of you. You guys go follow Natalie on the gram and the TikTok um, to follow all of her amazing things. And um, thank you for being on tonight. I'll have the recording up on my YouTube soon. Um, and I love you all. Happy Tuesday night, guys. Bye, guys. Bye.